You're listening to The Dual Threat Show with Todd Tremonti and Jason Samard. They are two proven team leaders sharing what works and sharpening each other through regular discussion about the real estate industry. What's up, folks? Welcome to another Dual Threat episode. I've got the one and only Jason Samard dominating the entire region, the entire part of the world called Canada, mostly in uh, Nanaimo in uh, Vancouver Island, which every time you post properties and listings and photos there, I'm, I'm tremendously envious. I just want to come clean on that and confess that openly. It's There's okay. I've been, I've been to Dallas. It's very nice, but uh, I understand the envy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The other day he was hiking like a mountain with his son and I was like, oh, well, that would be fun. Not an option. Uh, I love where I live, but it's not that pretty. Uh, anyway, I got Jason Samard. I'm Todd Tremonti. And if you've watched or hung out with us before, we we typically throw out a topic and sharpen each other, challenge each other, and then share everything we can with those that want to tune in. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna change it up a little bit today. We'll still do some of that sharing and sharpening each other, but we're just gonna do like immediate action steps to grow your business and your sales pipeline right now. Ways to improve your business that you can take and implement right away. So we're probably not going to go as long on each thing, but just give you quick things. This is how we're doing it, or this is how you could do it. You know, write it down, take it, use it, and then jump onto the next one. So we'll just kind of go back and forth. I'll start with you. What's something that somebody could be doing right now? It doesn't even have to be relevant to the current market necessarily, but something that would be, that would work right now to help people boost sales. Okay. Quick activity you can do immediately right now. I had a student do it the other day, got a listing appointment and a buyer uh, consultation out of it. Go to your social media list and start messaging people and say something like, hey, how are you doing? What's new and exciting? And get the conversation going. And then at some point in that conversation, ask them about how work's going. They're going to ask you about what's going on and just say something like, hey, look, a lot of my clients and friends have been asking me what's going on with the real estate market because there's a lot of volatility out there. People have concerns. What questions do you have? Yep. Open-ended question do that. Boom. Yeah. Uh, at a minimum, that's going to create significantly more social media engagement as those, whether it's Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or whatever, as the, those, those uh, platforms kind of, there, there's like a rating, like an internal almost SEO type score. And when you're messaging back and forth, it's like, oh, these people want to talk and see each other's stuff. So the more you do that, the more you'll raise your level of awareness and the more they'll see you in other ways too. So not only is that language that Jason just shared really strategic, but just connecting with people more directly really boosts everything. So I love that. Um, I've got a super simple one and you might've heard me say this before, but we've been doing it lately and it's, it's really working. Go to your website, whatever, Real Geeks or Boomtown or whatever you've got. Go to your website, pick a property that's unique and interesting. Now, what I've been doing lately, just for specifics, is I think there may be a resurgence uh, in small towns. People are realizing they can work virtually. They can work with an internet connection. People are enjoying more time at home. So maybe that's not true in your area. But whatever you think there might be a little momentum moving towards, go pick out a property or two that's beautiful or affordable or unique. Share that on social media, wherever you want to do that. And, you know, one little quick, interesting line, you know, check this bad boy out, check out this crazy deal. Have you ever thought about this area? And then just watch people comment, like, share. And if they're tagging their friends or they're sharing with their friends and you can jump in and private message and just say, hey, don't want to intrude, but looks like you might be interested in this property or something like that. And we're seeing some really good engagement. We're getting introduced to new people that way. So that's a super, super simple one. What else, Jason? Here's, an, here's a, a fun one. Find a client, friend, acquaintance, somebody, or a business that you like. Maybe it's their side hustle. Maybe it's their whatever. And do like a Facebook Live unveiling and, and talk about the product. So, yeah. for example, you know, ladies, if it, you could be putting on, you know, a new makeup or a, a face cream or something like that, and you're talking mm-hmm. about it. Uh, and you're, you're unveiling it to people, or maybe it's a coffee shop that you love and you want to feature that. And you're like, look, I just want to unveil this cup of coffee. I just made it from scratch, blah, blah, blah. Like create an event, but promote a business yeah. and do it like without them knowing that you're going to do it, surprise them with it when you tag them and they can see that you've promoted that. I guarantee you, if you do that over time, you're going to build a, a strong following and people are going to want to reciprocate. Yeah. Love that. We did, we've done it slightly differently, not quite as surprise oriented as yours, but where we, it's entirely about them. And we've gone so far as to do this on our 
real live actual radio show, but you can do it with Facebook live and we've done it with video. Just our favorite places. We want to promote them, brag on them, get them business, get them exposure. We don't say anything about ourselves. Sometimes to Jason's point from the Facebook idea or the private, the social media message idea, they'll want to reciprocate, but that's not why you do it. And if they don't do it, that's totally cool. Uh, if at, at a minimum you're helping them, but you're also improving your trust in the marketplace by just being a generous, helpful citizen, you know, so. And people want to support, people want to support business, like, especially right now, who doesn't want to support a local business? Like, yep. I, I don't know a time in my, in history where you've wanted to support a mom and pop shop more than now. Yep. 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 Feels a lot like uh, post 9-11. But, but different in that certain industries have been affected more than others. And so people are really, really leaning in. So here's a strategy that's, that's similar to that, but, but I feel like it's different. Uh, social media right now is obviously explosive. It's been massively popular, tremendous engagement for years and years anyway. But the fact of the matter is people are online more right now than they have been ever. They're home, they're on the internet, they're working on the internet, they're on phones, on computers all the time. So social media engagement is higher than ever. And one way you can take advantage of that is by creating Facebook groups, local Facebook groups. I've had a lot of our coaching students do versions of this where you find a, the geographic area that's most easily definable that people kind of associate with and they're, they're, it has positive association and do like a restaurant deals group or uh, a, a great uh, dry, you know, uh, takeout, pickup, you know, great menu kind of thing. We, I did one for a very small area. We're in Dallas, Fort Worth, so it's huge. And then some other pe- a couple of other people on our team kind of jumped in together and did one for the whole area. Both of them have done fairly well. Theirs is obviously larger because it's a bigger area, but all they've done is promote those local restaurants and say, hey, what are your deals? What are your like take home and cook meals? What are your quarantine kits and things like that? The restaurants have been super appreciative. They've got like 700 people in their group. One of our coaching clients did this in a small town. He's got 3,800 people in his group in the first, I think, six days. So then one quick little add-on strategy is we told him, hey, go put like a $100, $100 tab at one of those places every week and just say, hey, I got a tab running over at Bob's Coffee. Go get a cup of coffee on me and enjoy it but make sure you come back in the future. Tell your friends about Bob's. So it's kind of an add on. And then they're like, Who, who's paying for this? And it's like, oh, it's our friend Jason Smart over at Sims Real Estate Group or whatever. So everyone wins, everyone loves it, super affordable. So Facebook groups are growing like crazy because people are craving for engagement and community and they're on social media anyway. And then if you wanted to layer a little marketing for yourself, you could do the, uh, you know, put a tab at a local coffee shop, ice cream shop, someplace safe where people can get in and out, pick up or whatever. But that one's been really fun and really, really productive lately. You're up. I love that. I love it. Here's another great idea that you can easily implement right now. Okay. Go through the last two or three years of people that you've been out showing properties to people that you've worked with and start following up with them. The ones that didn't end up buying, start following up with them. Another quick one I'll add on to that. Sorry, I'm probably stealing one, but this is an add on is all the clients that you sold houses to that bought maybe condos, they bought, they were first time buyers, they were entry into the market. The turnover on those are very quick. Two, three years in a lot of cases, less than that. People have life events, changes. We just had a drastic change in the economy. So guess what? That's probably created a lot of life changes. Start reaching out to them. Hey, just so you know, things are starting to normalize. I know this zombie apocalypse that we've been living through has been, has been a lot of fun. Obviously not, but um, things are normalizing. And so I'm curious, what do you have on your agenda when it comes to real estate this year? And just, just try it. You got nothing to lose, but reach out to them. I did that yesterday. I got two listings. I love that. Two pieces of that because there was two parts of it. Number one, all the clients you've engaged with that didn't, didn't transact business, make sure you're reaching back out to them. And then all the ones that did that are likely to be quicker turnover, but I would say all of them, period. But especially the ones that are likely to be quicker turnover, the first time buyer types. Um, just, hey, like any big changes coming up? I mean, things are starting to normalize. You guys have any goals? Love that. Really, really good. While we're talking a ton about social media, uh, I recommend you do either a Facebook Live, truly live, or a Facebook Live that's actually planned. You can schedule them uh, and do a how-to course. It doesn't have to be a super, super developed course, but how to buy and sell a home in the current market. By the way, you don't have to say 
COVID-19, coronavirus, stock market volatility, unemployment market. You don't have to say any of that. Just in the current market. The reality is the way we would coach people to buy and sell isn't wildly different. There's a handful of things that definitely are different. But this thing could be done over and over and over again in the future. But if you'll do that, you can email, invite everybody in your database to jump in and engage there. But also just grab that recording. So the live event is great for engagement and awareness and attention. But then the recording is tremendously valuable to email all or parts of it out to your database, to prospects as, as you're engaging with them in the future. And then, of course, just to uh, put that kind of home base on YouTube or whatever you do for long-term content building. But we've had uh, really good engagement with that as well, as have a bunch of our coaching clients too. So what else? Engage in a mastermind group. Find a mastermind group. Find people that are smarter than you in other areas and learn from them and then share your gifts. That's the, the greatest thing that Todd and I do. We don't know everything. There's a lot of things we don't know. We don't have everything figured out. Our businesses aren't perfect, right? I mean, look, we're good at certain things, but there's certain things that we're like constantly students and we're like, hey, how do I get that knowledge? So what do we do? Instead of trying to learn it all ourselves, we reach out to people that are really good in those areas and then we'll share our gifts with them and they share them back with us. And then in turn, we try and pass it on so that we can share our knowledge. So start a mastermind group or participate in a mastermind group. Find people that are smarter than you in other areas of the business that you want to improve on. Love that. And I always try to do that in real estate. And then I also try to do that outside of real estate so that I'm learning things that maybe aren't normal or that no one's done in our business or I'm just being challenged. So love that one. That's a good reminder for me too. Um, I'm going to give this as one tip, but you could do it as text or email. And that's take like the most valuable piece of content that you've created in the last year or whatever. Maybe it's a video, maybe it's a blog article, maybe it's um, a how-to of something or whatever. And text broadcast or email broadcast that out to as many people in your database as you're comfortable emailing it or texting it to. And then just add, is there any questions I could answer or anything else like this we could create that would be helpful for you? That's it. it. There's no business question. It's just like, hey, here's a piece of helpful content that I'm pretty confident will be at minimum, you know, not a disruption, not annoying. And then like, hey, hope this is valuable thinking about you. Would there, is there anything else we could create that would be helpful for you or friends or family? And then just back away. That's it. I really like the text broadcast piece of this. We use a company called Callfire. Super easy. Um, and you can do just absurd numbers of people really, 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 really fast. Love that. Love that. Uh, start a video blog. Start a video blog. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, we all have a decent camera in our phones nowadays, right? Like the quality is amazing. So get yourself a selfie stick, start documenting things that are happened throughout your week. And if you don't have a, the money, learn how to just edit a little video and then send it out to your database. So part two of this, I guess, is if you don't have a database or if you're, if you're, you don't have a list of people that you're growing on a monthly basis that you're sending valuable information and content to start doing it. Start yesterday. Start yesterday, please. I promise you that it's a great way to build your, your audience. Cause um, Todd and I both understand the value of being top of mind. If you're, if you're a secret agent, you're going to, you're not going to make any income. People can't, you can't be a secret agent. People need to know that you're in the business. People need to know that when it comes to real estate, you're owning some mind share with them. So there's a really great one. A video blog will get a lot of fun and tension. Show different sides of your life too. Show your fun side, your family side, what you do for hobbies. Show your professional side too. Mix it all up and uh, people love it. It doesn't have to be super long. It could be a few minutes, uh, but it's something that people will look forward to. You can start training your audience to really get excited about the content that you're putting out there. Uh, I've got one more meaty one that I can think of off the top of my head. And we've been utilizing reverse offers. Uh, in the current market <clears throat> more than we have in a long time. I don't know if we've ever talked about that on the dual threat show before, but I mention it from time to time. But uh, what I mean, you might be thinking something different. What I mean when I say reverse offer is an informal, non-binding offer from the seller of a property to a potential buyer of a property. The ideal time to do this is when a buyer agent or a buyer's come and viewed the property and left you some feedback. And the feedback is not like offer on the way, but it's also not like total dump, overpriced, get, get out of my life. Anything in between those two, if you're in a market where you feel like you might need a little extra push to get, to get a, a listing sold, uh, and some of us are in those markets and some of us aren't. So if this is relevant, great. 
extend and let's just say Jason's the buyer rep, buyer, buyer's agent or the agent that's helping the buyer view a property, right? I would uh, call or maybe email depending on the scenario and just say, hey, Jason, I saw that you, your client saw our property, 123 Main Street, and the feedback was pretty solid. I don't know if it's a strong contender for them, but I spoke with my sellers based on your feedback. They were curious, would your buyers be interested in moving forward on this property if they were willing to offer a $7,500 discount right now and leave all of the media equipment and furniture in the media room? Do you, would you mind just running that by your clients and, and getting me a, a yes or no in the next day or so? What you do when you do that uh, is you, I, I call it a Doyle Brunson. I have a whole negotiation strategy that we teach called the Doyle Brunson. This is kind of one piece of it, but you put them to a decision deal or no deal, right? Are you in or are you out? They might not have even been thinking about you anymore, but now you jumped on their radar and you gave them a scenario to consider. You would be really, really surprised how favorably this can work, that you kind of force your property into their awareness and into their consideration. And there's a couple of benefits. Number one, they might respond and be like, well, no, but we'd be open to this. And now you're, now you're working a deal. Um, even if they say, well, think, yeah, I'll run it by them and I'll let them know. Now, if I get some other calls on the property, it's, it's totally honest and ethical of me to say, hey, look, we're working on a potential offer. You know, I don't have anything in writing, but we are, we're working on a potential deal with another buyer at the moment. So we're wide open for offers, but you know, we, we have a little activity on this thing. And if you're working for your seller, working really, really hard, I think you owe it to them to do everything you can to, to increase interest and competition and all those things. So anyway, reverse offers are a good idea to be working right now. If you're I just love looking that. For ways to I learned them. something today, Todd, that was, that's, that's brilliant. I love that. That was a really good, good nugget there. Yep. Um, man, I want to get, I want to, now I, I'm like, man, I want to top that. Um, I don't know if I can. I think that's, that's a good one to, to end on here. We can wrap it up and, and leave folks wanting a little bit more. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll do another yeah. one of these in a, in a week or two. And th we didn't plan ahead on this. We were just like, hey, why don't we just throw out some quick take and go work it kind of stuff. So this was off the top of the head, really stuff that we're doing. We're asking our, our teams, our coaching clients, you know, and we're sharing and, and masterminding with other friends in the business. So hopefully this was encouraging to you. Uh, that's the goal. Wouldn't you agree? Just to, to, to get people optimistic about, you know, selling houses and keeping, keeping moving forward. Right. Yep. Can I share one more? Yeah, I picked this it. up from, uh, from Greg Harrelson recently. So uh, adopt the buyer program. Mm -hmm. So I think that's brilliant too. So you, uh, you basically the buyer, so you represent the seller, the buyer moved into the property a few months, you know, once they've settled in, maybe give them something in writing, an email, maybe mail piece or something that just says, hey, just so you know, I still have a, a communication line to the seller. If you have any questions about the property, please don't hesitate to reach out. Here's my contact information and I'm happy because I have a direct line with the seller and, and I'm happy to answer any questions. And then what you can do is you can sort of passively you know, over time, continue to build a relationship by providing them value. Because the truth is, is 95% of agents will probably ignore their client after they've done a transaction with them, sadly. So the agents the that, I see that do that well, also do the uh, house anniversary, like on the one year anniversary, it's like, Hey, just checking in. How are you guys enjoying the house? Was there anything that came up that would be helpful if I were to reach out to the previous owner, you know, and you're just kind of anchoring, Hey, it's been a year and you're subtle. You're not saying it, but you're subtly like, Hey, How's your agent been taking care of you after they got their commission? Wink, 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 you know? So uh, I love yeah, that. it's a good one. I'll tell you the thing I don't like about that though. I hate to be negative here, but I like, know, I know. When, when the buyer agent runs and plops their sign in the yard right after closing, after like we sold the listing and then the buyer agent comes in, the adopt a buyer deals like adopt the neighborhood. Like, Hey, look, I sold it. You're like, what? You didn't so this. just so you know, we're one of the, probably the only markets in the world probably that does this, but like when you sell a property here, you get to put your, your, uh, your sold sign up on the buy That's side. That's like expected and, and suggested. Yep. And it's only in Nanaimo. You go 20 minutes outside of here, 30 minutes yeah. the other way. And it's not, it's not. And we way. don't ever fuss about it. Like I would never rat anybody out or call them and fuss at them. I'm just like, eh, whatever, man. I mean, if it's the standard in your market, why wouldn't you? If it takes two, it in. takes two, right? I mean, ultimately I put the listing out there, but if you brought the buyer, we, we yep. both sold the property. So we should, yeah. You know, Maybe I just benefit. need to start doing it and then stop. Well, start promoting that with, with people because they're going to be like, man, that's cool. I get to put my sign up. Like, yeah. wow. Like, yeah, man, you sold it. Go ahead. Put your sign up. Look, I don't know. look, you learn something every day, folks. Jason picked one up. I picked one up. Everybody's a winner today. Hopefully you got six or seven or eight or however many we shared. But the goal was just quick strategies you can implement to boost your sales, stay positive, keep moving forward right now. 
I appreciate you watching. If you haven't watched the other videos, it's available. We, we don't like hyper push this like a big podcast. Like we, we don't really care that much about, you know, a ton of views other than we'd love to help a bunch of people. Right. And on yeah. that note, if you would like specific help from one of us or, or our teams or something like that, Jason does coaching. We, I do coaching on obviously different things. We have some slightly different styles and approaches and scripts and business structures and things like that. But if you're curious, reach out to both of us. Our information is usually right below this video. If not, we're both really easy to find. Just Google Jason Samard or Todd Tremonti. You'll find an email or a phone number in lots of places. So we'd love to help you. We'd love to talk to you about potentially coaching, consulting, an event, or just swapping some good ideas. So if not, download this, share it with some friends, check out all the past episodes. There's all sorts of crazy topics and we'll keep coming back. If you comment on these with suggestions for topics, we'll probably do a show or an episode or whatever you want to call this uh, on your question. So anything, any final thoughts, Jason? Uh, just love serving people. You know, we're here to help. We both helped people reach elite levels in this business. We understand it. Um, and we're, we're here to serve. So we're both blessed. We've been able to build businesses, exit production, and, and now have freed up time for ourselves to work on our businesses, but also help others do the same. So if you're are somebody that has always believed that you wanted to have a business, but you're one of those people that's, you know, stuck in the transaction treadmill and, and doesn't know how to get off of it. You have two guys on this podcast that understand what it takes to get off of that and build a, a real business. So if we can help you reach out to us, we both, uh, we have very similar core values, uh, similar philosophies, but you know, we approach it from different angles and, and I think we can both bring a ton of value to your business. Yeah. And only one of us cut their hair so badly that they had to wear a hat on, on that. <laughs> well, I need a haircut so bad. Like this. <laughs> All right, folks. On that note, have an amazing we'll weekend. On the next one. Take care. Cheers. Bye.